When you're building a new residential home and you're thinking about conditioned attic versus vented attic, there's a couple different things to think about there, plus your metal roofing assembly. Today we're on site with Matt Reisinger at one of his projects. We're gonna talk about the differences. Let's get into it. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. Matt Reisinger. Hey Thad. Great to Thanks have you on the channel my job, again. Man. Yeah, absolutely. So we got a brand new metal roof going on yes, right sir. here. Um, and we are talking about conditioned versus vented attics oh, like in the assembly topic. right here. That's a good topic. Absolutely, so tell me about it. You've done conditioned attic spaces for years and yeah. tell me why and kind of what that means. Well, let me back up a little bit and talk about what's normally done. You know, throughout this entire neighborhood, this is a 70s neighborhood, but even if you went to new construction neighborhoods, the majority of attics in the South are what they call vented attics. It's true in the North as well. A vented attic, you might have gable vents, you might have air hawks. Uh, you know, eave vents. The idea is you've got airflow in the attic so that if the roof has a small amount of leakage, uh, you know, condensation, whatever, it's going to dry out and not rot your structure out. That's good in terms of uh, an assembly that's going to last. You know, my neighbors in the 70s neighborhood have roofs that are uh, asphalt shingle roofs and they've lasted because when they leaked, uh, they dried out and there wasn't a problem. However, vented attics are also dumb. Uh, in this day and age, uh, vented attics mean that, you know, every neighbor here has rat poop throughout their entire attic. I've had raccoons in my attic before I switched to an unvented attic. Uh, I had a lemur in my attic. Uh, I've had a snake in my attic. Uh, you know, my duct work and most people's duct work is in their attic when it's 150 degrees yeah. on a typical summer day. And you've got little R6 duct uh, keeping your 50 degree air from your 150 degree air. So for many, many reasons, vented attics, uh, from an energy efficiency perspective, from a healthy house perspective, are dumb. However, if we're gonna go to an unvented attic, we need to think about the details. So, most builders in the south, when they go to an unvented attic, they spray open cell uh, foam in the entire attic assembly, they close everything off, they think about their uh, traditionally uh, gas, maybe vented appliances and switch those to high efficiency appliances that are maybe gonna use uh, solid PVC for the venting in and out to the, for the combustion air. You can't, okay. use, you can't use B vents through the attic, you know, that metal vent yeah. anymore. However, uh, in the, over the years, I've kind of evolved to think, well, maybe there's two different ways to do this. And this house is kind of an interesting example. This house, Thad, has your Sheffield metal roof on it uh, and it is a, a spray foamed closed attic assembly. I have closed cell foam in here, but I have a hunter panel, insulated panel on the roof deck. And so that hunter panel, if you look at the cross section, uh, it has a uh, two inch poly ISO. And on top of the poly ISO is a one inch wood spacer block. And then on top of that is a five eighths uh, CDX plywood deck material. And that's basically what your panel got screwed yeah. right to was that deck on top. Well, tell me how that's different from the assembly we did for your house. Okay, so what's happening at my house was I did a sandwich of decking, uh, you know, Huber zip system, sheathing, a couple of inches, four inches of poly ISO, and then another layer of zip system. And then I did a, uh, a 3D mesh product. I think I used Keen's uh, product and I used some one by fours for ventilation mm -hmm. underneath the metal. So my metal is ventilated. However, my roof sheathing is not ventilated. Uh, and so I want to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to make sure that sheathing is not getting wet. So for instance, I taped all my seams on my Huber and then I also came back and put a fully adhered underlayment. I used uh, Sharkskin Ultra SA yep. over the top of the entire roof. That way all my fasteners, everything was 100% covered. Then I put my 3D mesh on and then I put my Sheffield metal on top of that. So I'm basically vented underneath the metal. Now this house though is vented in slightly different and maybe a better way really, yeah. where I've got this air gap underneath my OS, or pardon me, my CDX. And then I vented through all my eaves uh, and all my gables were vented too, believe it or not, so that I could have airflow underneath that uh, CDX. And then I have a ridge vent across as well so that air can flow up and yes. out of the ridge. And now I have a vented roof, but a closed attic. Yeah, and I can tell you, I like hunter panels 
because now you have that eave to ridge airflow, complete yeah. vented right. airflow above that conditioned attic space. Yep. Tell me some other benefits of using a hunter panel versus some other options. Well, for us, the uh, one big benefit was labor savings. Uh, you know, those hunter panels are all ready to go that you just basically screw them down to the deck. Uh, and Hunter did a really interesting thing where they take uh, uh, some green spray paint and they're spray painting exactly where those spacer blocks are that give you that one inch airflow. Because we wouldn't want to screw in the field. It would, it would curve the plywood. You'd see that on the deck eventually when that metal roof went on. So we want to we want to screw through the sheathing, keep everything nice and solid. Uh, so the hunter panel was probably a labor savings, even though we're paying a little bit more for a panel that has, uh, you know, it's kind of pre-assembled. So gotcha. Speak. And I know you won't mind, but I kind of want to talk more about some building science yeah, here. Please. Joe Stebrick, I love Joe, and I love watching his videos on YouTube. Tell me a little bit about the uh, poly iso that you got here. You have it layered uh, vertically and horizontally with the seams inner space. So tell me about that, why that matters with airflow underneath the, the roof deck. Yeah, you know, I learned that from Joe. Joe wrote an article on fine home building maybe 15 years ago where he used uh, eight inch uh, thick blocks of insulation on the outside of his barn in Massachusetts. And he had a problem. He took it apart 10 years later and realized that all those blocks had shrunk and he had these half inch gaps of insulation throughout the outside of his building. So uh, the article's uh, proponent was basically look we should always do our exterior insulation in two layers so that instead of having this and shrinkage we're having an overlap on those two panels we're overlapping both horizontally and vertically so if we get some shrinkage we still have full depth insulation underneath there so that's the way to do it and the beauty of that exterior insulation is now my framing's not getting hot so i can use less insulation on the inside of the house in this house, I still used, uh, you know, four or five inches of closed cell foam. At my house, I still have an R30 Rockwell bat on the inside. But man, that house, when I've got four inches of poly iso, even though it's only R20, R21 or so on the roof deck, that's a lot of insulation on that roof deck. It's really going to keep that heat away from the house. And then that metal, you know, that metal is going to go, as I said earlier, many decades of service why not make sure everything in that whole assembly is top notch? If, if yeah. I'm gonna put a roof on that's gonna last 30, 40, 50 years, why not make sure everything else underneath that is gonna last that long? Absolutely. And the same goes with, the, you know, if you're gonna choose metal already, if you're already thinking metal, which you should be, I've used metal for 15 years, it's a great long lasting roof, why not then say, hey, I'm gonna upgrade what's, I'm gonna upgrade what's underneath the metal. Put that rooftop insulation on, use a really good underlayment, Let's make sure that assembly has a really, really long service life. Absolutely. All right, Matt, well, thanks so much. I love, love conversations like these, and I think we need to have more building science talk on the Metal Roofing channel. I think that's really important thanks, Dad. as well. Tell, me, tell us about the Build Show. Man, we publish every Tuesday and every Friday. I'd love to have you guys uh, come over to my channel and check it out. Lots of nerdy talk like this over there. Awesome. Comment down below with any questions. I love talking with you guys, building that community, and that's really important as well. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing channel. Anything else, SheffieldMetals.com. And as always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.